in Botswana, I saw elections taking place. And I saw that God would give the ruling party to have more advantage. But the problem is that they will have issues to do with um, electorate. They will have even some more problems to have even the members of parliament where they really need to have to understand what I'm talking about. There will be this where they might have a problem of getting 50%. However, on the presidency, God, I, saw, I saw the hand of God going into the ruling party. Now, I want us to pray for Botswana. I, I understand what I'm saying to you. The nation of Botswana, God is showing me, the forthcoming election have already said what God said, but we need to keep praying. Uh, uh, the, the, the current president will still be there. The Lord is going to use him so much for Botswana. He, his heart, the heart of the current president is very clean. But you see, you have to be very careful that when you come into power, this next time that God is giving you to come in, to watch around you, you will not be poisoned. That is it. You will finish your second time strong and gallant. So I pray for His Excellency, the President of Botswana, and all the cabinet leaders. And I declare strength in the name of Jesus. I declare healing in the name of Jesus. I declare you covered in the mighty name of Jesus. Botswana, the same party that has been ruling you since 1966, you got to end the president of September, is after this man another party will come after this one another party will come and dominate person are you clapping the botswana democratic party suffering a historical defeat after governing that country for nearly six decades shock results indicate that bdp has only won one seat losing as parliamentary majority in this week's general election Party President Mohosi Masisi has ultimately lost the parliamentary majority, ending a 58-year rule by his organization. As voters in Botswana have rejected the country's longest ruling political party that's been in power since independence, that was in 1966, the Umbrella for Democratic Change Party looks set to form part of this new government. Masisi addressed the media about this result earlier today. The evidence is overwhelming. We've lost this election massively. Right. And uh, we need to come to terms with it and make space and give opportunity to the newly elected leaders and respect them and support them. I know many times people are wondering when we're praying for Ghana, all we are praying is Lord give us good leaders or praying for election. We're not going to pray for that. Election is election. You go and elect. And for your information, I don't believe God chooses leaders for countries. If God is the one who chooses leaders, he's been making a lot of mistakes. He's been making a lot, especially on our continent. We say, God, what kind of choices have you been making? God does not choose leaders for countries. He's not involved in the business. That's true. We are not Israel. We are Ghana. We are a non-covenantal nation, a Gentile nation. God does not choose leaders for us. If you even pray and say, God, we pray, oh Lord, you know, there has to be choose the one who is right. He won't choose because i cannot believe god chooses if god is the one who's making these choices we, we have to have a conversation with him he's not in the leadership choosing process it's a lazy way of thinking it's a way of abdicating your responsibility and hoping that whatever comes it is god's will no it is our will It's the will of the people if you are foolish you make a foolish choice so we're not going to deal with that but god doesn't choose leaders just just take it like that go and vote you are choosing the leader you can prayerfully consider you can pray and say god guide me but that's up to you just, but use your head philippians chapter 1 verse 27 only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of christ that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your good affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. The word conversation there, 
That is your citizen behavior. Your citizen behavior. That's the word conversation. So Paul, therefore, is teaching a country in view. A country. Now for someone who is a Jew and Roman, he is teaching citizenship. A country in view means God is creating his own country. The other ones were man created as it were. But God is creating his own country. God didn't create Nigeria. Men created Nigeria. Look at me everybody. God didn't create Nigeria. Men created Nigeria. God didn't create Ghana. Men created Ghana. God didn't create America. America, God's own country. God didn't create America. Men created America. God didn't create United Kingdom. Men united the kingdom. United Kingdom was part of European Union. Men sat down and said, we don't want to be part. Men took United Kingdom out of European Union. It's all man-made. All nations are created by men. Right now there's an agitation. Biafra wants a nation. If they go about it the right way, it could be granted. Oh yes. Men have the right to come together and determine their own republic. Meeting all the requirements. It's not God. Nigeria is a country of God. Shut up. Go and read your Bible. Stop acting your illiteracy in public. If you went to school well and read history, you will know how countries you will know how nations came about. If you read your history well, except you wasted your father's school fees. If you are a good student of government, which every school offers, you will understand how governments are formed in nations. You will understand the political process. God is not a part of it. God is not a... Men determine what they want. And God does not usurp man's will. I'm teaching good. I'm teaching good. See, I'm combining all the lectures your lecturer has given you in school plus re revelation. That's why you have to pay me very well. I'm blessing you, right? It's not God made. The political process is determined by men. That's why it is men that vote who becomes a president or who becomes a governor. It's not God. It's not God. God has never given any nation a ruler. Never. Whether the ruler is a good ruler or a bad one, every nation deserves the kind of ruler they have. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I am not joking. Okay, let's, let's look. Look at me, everybody. <laughs> look at me, everybody. Look at me, everybody. Are you looking at me? Okay. The political process in every nation runs from grassroots to the top. And each grassroots community appoints who represents their interest. The people that represent their interest determines who rules overall. Is that not the process? Whether it is through the ballot box or selection or appointment, there were people who represented the majority who made the selection on behalf of the majority. I'm teaching good here. Leave that thing. Somebody comes to me and says, Dr. Damina, I want to be a president. I want to be a governor. I want to be a local government chairman. The first question before prayer. Did your people select you? No. Why are you coming here? So will God just carry you by force and put on the people? The people must select you. Because it's the people that you will rule. 
Go and listen to my teaching on why things happen the way they happen on the earth. God is not a part of it. God only becomes a part of it when you have selected the person. Then God will say, okay, let me see how much I can walk through this person to help these people. Because the person you already appointed will determine the level to which God can operate. I'm teaching good here. If the person say, God, shut up. God will say, thank you, sir. God will stand aloof and be watching. Some say, can we pray for him to die? Who will kill him? <laughs> That's why you see, bad rulers will live and live and live and live and live and live. You are praying for them to die. They are becoming healthier. The more you pray, the more they use your money to look for means of hell to stay healthier. Because God is long suffering, not willing that any soul should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So that's what we say. If you don't want the people in power, get your voters card and make up your mind within your community who to put to speak for you. If every community gets quality people, the quality people will produce a quality person. This political science. Let's put it aside. Let's come back to revelation knowledge. But you know, as your pastor, I need to help you understand things. So I say, but the Bible says, by me, kings rule, and by me, princes decree justice. Have you read the pretext and the postex? Who is me there? Who is speaking? To who is he speaking? About what is he speaking? Didn't they teach you that in CRK? That when you read a place, you should ask those questions. Who spoke? To who is he speaking? About what is he speaking? So when you see such a thing, go pretext and post text to understand context. If it's God that gives rulers, no country will have a bad ruler. Because all good things come from God. It's men that determine what they want. Because God gave man the freedom to choose what he wants. If I just give you a good revelation, shout a good amen. Can I pro, 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 prophesy? Yes, can I prophesy? Prophesy, man of God. <laughs> Prophecy gone wrong. Now, let me read your news. Boss Honor President Mokwetsi Masisi conceives defeat in the general election, ending the ruling party's 58 years in power. Opposition's Dumi Boko takes lead. <laughs> hey! Can I prophesy? Prophesy! Prophesy, man of God! Hey! Hey, Major One! Prophesy! Prophesy, prophet! Prophet! Brother Joshua in Gila, prophesy, man of God. <laughs> Who do they say to my generation? Which version of God are we even serving? That God that normally lied to them. That God that cannot tell them accurate prophecy. They like, you know, this is our generation, eh? Hey, oh my God. <laughs> Botswana conducted presidential election and uh, before then, you know, normally our pastors, all these are people that normally claim to be prophets. Whenever the, uh, any nation is having an election, all of them used to see vision. Right now, they, even, they have even started seeing the one of election, uh, America. I saw this. I saw... <laughs> so, they have, they have started seeing America's own... Oh, this is how they saw the one of Botswana. You know, if you are following uh, politics, of course you know how the thing works. You will know that this person may win. This party has been on the seat for years, so they are going to win. You will come out and say, yeah, this person, the person will win. If the thing enter, you say, yes, I'm a great man of God. 
That is the kind of package and wickedness they are pressing on social media. This party that just they defeated now have been there, has been there since 50, since it has been long, 58 years. So it's not a small party. There has been long there, full of corruption, wickedness. They never knew that the other opposition will win them, will defeat them. They never believe. And these are prophetess and prophets. Because that assumption, that confidence that they are going to win, they now claim that, claim that God told them. You hear what Joshua Gillis said? You know, when you enter the seat and uh, your heart, imagine your heart, which will, <laughs> which will hurt. All this package, because the man is no longer young. So when you enter the seat, if anything happened to him, maybe sick, he say, yes, I prophesy now. I said it. Yeah, health issue. Health issue. That is, that is how they manipulate people. I don't blame them. I blame our generation, our generation, that has turned Christianity as a joke. They are seeing Christianity as a place where you can just enter anyhow, one day, anyhow, anyhow. Miracle seekers. I don't blame them. I blame miracle seekers. Christians that turn to miracle seekers. Anybody that is after miracle is not a Christian. A genuine Christian is not after miracle. A genuine Christian is always after Christ. When you find Christ, miracle follows. A genuine Christian is miracle worker. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. In my name they shall see vision. They, might, they will do signs and wonders. This sign shall follow them that believe. And not this sign shall follow Obat Angel that believe. No. Or this sign shall follow Suleiman that believe. No. Or this sign shall follow uh, Prophet uh, prophet or the prophet in Nigeria that believe no, all these signs shall follow prophet Bushili that believe no, all these signs shall follow pastor prophet Uche David no, or brother Joshua Gile no, or Dr. Ebe Damina or uh, daddy Mensa or Tabe no, he said this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out demon. So when you believe in Christ. You are supposed to be casting out demons. You are supposed to be doing signs and wonders. Anybody that is doing signs and wonders can never seek after miracle. Can not be, never be crazy of miracle. Miracle or prophecy should not bother you. But because you don't know who you are in Christ, because you are not a Christian, you are only miracle seeker. That is why you are running after them. That is why you are running after them. Miracle seekers are Christ users. They think that they can use God to get what they want and they run away. They are just like Pharisees in those days. They are not Christ seekers. They don't seek Christ. They only get what they will get. So when the man of God don't have what to give them, he will cook lie. He will cook lies to tell them because he, want, he must tell them what they want to hear. They want to hear prophecy. They want to hear receive it. They don't want to hear repentance. They don't want to hear salvation message. They only hear just what they will gain from Christ. So that is why they normally cook this thing and give them. Imagine. If this thing happened to be in olden days, they would have packed these prophets now. They read them. It's only Pastor Uche that got it right. But Simon the Sorcerer was also giving prophecy. Don't see a man of God. Deuteronomy 18, 20 down to 22. Bible says, if any man prophesy lies... That person should be deleted. They should delete the person. So if this thing happened to be in olden days now, they would have bring a gila, bring a, a bushiri, delete both of them for prophesying lies, for lying against God, for cooking lies, for cooking lies against God. Somebody will say, no, God can change his mind. Maybe these people, they pray. That is how they used to do. If they did not got it right, they will come out and say, no, those people, they prayed and God answered them and showed them mercy. And then they, that is why they win. Really? <laughs> and other ones did not pray. The other group did not pray. When you are giving the prophecy, it not tell us that God, uh, these people pray. Or before the thing come to pass, it not tell us that uh, these people has prayed though, and God has changed uh, his mind. 
God has answered their prayer, so these people will not win again. No. Who do this is to my generation? Manipulations and wickedness everywhere. Selfish people. It's not about the world. You know, this thing is pride, though. It's pride. I must prophesy. So that they will be seeing you, Major One. Look at what they are answering now. Huh? Plenty names and whatever. Major One. Hey, see a one. What, it's all about one, one, one. Nobody wants to answer Bushili Professor uh, Bushili 2. Major 2. Mm -mm. They are not taking glory for themselves. Pride. Pride. In olden days, when a prophet give prophecy, he don't care. He just come there, give you the message. Nobody even know. Nobody will even know. But these people will carry a matter on social media. Be announcing it, announcing it, announcing it. Make sure that everybody hear about your message. <laughs> <laughs> the prophecy false prophets false prophets false prophetess Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 Bible says he said be one false prophet who come to you in sheep clothing but in one day are revealed words it doesn't matter how many years that war has started what matters is what is there what is he preaching He's, the words is oppression by their fruit you shall know them Verse 16 says, he said, by their fruit you shall know them. So don't be deceived by prophecy, even if the person got it right, accurate, whatever. Don't be deceived by prophecy. Matthew 22, 22, the Bible says that in all end times shall come, when men will not hack into the genuine gospel, genuine gospel of Christ. He said, be one false prophet, that these men, they will come like they will come, they will even perform great signs and wonders. Matthew 24, 24 says that they will perform great signs and wonders. They will, they will, so we even said that they are Christ. And they will perform great signs and wonders. So don't be deceived by signs and wonders. After all, little doctors perform signs and wonders. In book of Second Timothy says that these people, they will not hear time shall come when men will not hearken to the voice of God again. They will gather themselves false apostles, false prophets. They will be telling the world they want to hear. We are in that end time, child of God. We are in end time and they are telling us what we want to hear. You want to hear election. You want to hear prophecy. You want to hear this and that. You want to see miracle. They are giving you miracle now. Anyhow, miracle. Native doctors, witch doctors, they perform miracle. Don't be deceived. Child of God, don't be deceived. This is why I normally say, no go for yourself. When you know Christ, for who he is. When you know your God, your master, your master, your creator, all this, you know how you operate. You know how your master, of course now, when you know who your father is, which you're supposed to know, you're supposed to know when your father used to go to work as a child born in the house. You're supposed to know when, how your father behaves. You're supposed to know all those things. But since you refuse to know, you're not seeing yourself as a stranger. What? Meanwhile, you're in the house. This is how they'll be deceiving you. When you know Christ for whom he is, when you know your master being Jesus, nobody will deceive you with prophecy or prophet or prophecy or what, miracle. No. No. It's high time for us to say no to all this manipulation. Because you are patronizing them. That is why they keep coming. Prophecy everywhere. Everybody is not a prophet. It's not a prophet. Go to Facebook. Go to YouTube. Go to TikTok. All of them. They are not prophets. You see them before, brother, this. Before, Joshua Giller used to say, brother, Joshua Giller, you don't want to answer prophet, you don't want to answer that title. All of a sudden, now he's not, they're not calling him prophet. How? From brother to prophet. From this to that. Major one, this and that. See a one. Hey, final measurement. Final measurement, uh, prophet. The uh, of Chalfancha, the only one that sees all. Imagine. We must say no to manipulations of men. No God and no peace. These men are coming up. They are even increasing because we refuse to do the needful. If you know your God and I know my God, those that know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. If you know your God and I know my God, their business will collapse. Yes, it will. Now, let me go to the one of Dr. Albert Davina and my bishop, Pastor Bishop Mason. I think I disagree. Yes, Christians are supposed to be involved in politics. Christians are supposed to be involved in politics. We're not, because this thing, if you refuse to be involved, of course, unbelievers will rule you. 
if my people, if the people, if the righteous is on the throne, Bible says, people rejoice. But if the wicked is on the throne, people mourn. Proverbs said that if the wicked is on the throne, people mourn. If he said we should not get involved in politics, then you get ready to be mourning as a Christian. You don't need to pray over it now. Of course you mourn, which we are mourning in Africa. We are mourning in Africa because our leaders are not born again. Because our, our leaders, they don't know God. Even small that enter there as, as Christians, they are not yet, they are not even born again. They are just there. They are just there. They are just practical. If Christians can be involved, fully involved in politics, all this unnecessary manipulation will stop. How can unbelievers be ruling Christians? You say you should not be involved in politics, that God is not involved. It's things of the world. No, we have to be involved now. We're supposed to get involved. Okay? Fully involved. Take charge. We're supposed to be rulers. And be allowing them to be ruling us. They will lead you lead, because they are blind. They will lead you a blind man leading a man that can see. You see where they, they will find, they will, they will learn. That is just what is going on in Africa. Blind people are leading those that can see. That is our problem. Unbelievers are ruling Christians. Which is not supposed to be. So please, we should get involved. Go there, go out there, vote. Make sure that you even, not even only to vote. Come out, let them vote for you as a Christian. And put an end to unnecessary manipulations of men in Africa. So I can put an end to this suffering. The suffering is too much. So God is involved. It's God who will show you, God help me. Direct me to the right path. Show me mercy. I want to vote the right person. That is how God will get involved now. As it shall be given unto you. God will show you mercy and lead you where uh, uh, the person you vote for. So there's nothing like God will come down and vote for you and bring this person and say, take, this person is your leader. Of course now. But once it's the election, God is involved. If you, get, if you want him to be involved, if you invite him, he will be involved. He will be involved. So there's nothing like God is not involved. God is involved. But our, the problem there is that we refuse to do the needful. We refuse to do our path by getting fully involved as Christians. Go, come out, let them vote for you. Enter there. Then God will show you. Because if a Christian enter there, the Christian will have God first. God have mercy on me. I want to go and rule my people. God is not involved. Why did he not choose Moses? God is not involved. Why did he did they choose Joshua? God is not involved. Why did they appoint honestly, a lot of people, believers, that lead the children of Israel? They were Christians. They were, they were believers. They were believers. They led the children of Israel from their uh, place of pain to their promised land. They were believers. So of course God is involved. God chose those people. God appointed Moses. God appointed the same thing, Joshua. So we must do what? Get involved, children of God. Thank you guys for listening. We love you guys. Don't forget, this video did not target to defend anybody's character. We're only saying that this thing... We not, must not be given unnecessary prophecy. Focus on your own. Don't be looking, okay, some, okay now, ele election in America. Nigeria pastors are prophesying over it. Meanwhile, we have plenty problems in Nigeria. They don't care. They don't used to see that one. What they used to see is where they will see them very well. We must stop manipulating people. Your flesh, your flesh can also speak. As a prophet, your flesh can also speak. When you begin to live life, that doesn't make sense. Your flesh will start speaking to you. You come out and tell people. So, you guys should not be, I must prophesy. Must you prophesy on every election? No, must you? I must prophesy. You guys should fear God. Though. See you guys next time. Shalom.